Ice Sky. Every time after watching another mediocre anime about moving to parallel worlds, I vow not to watch them anymore, but I'm still drawn to them like a magnet. All because, no matter how you look at it, but it is an interesting subject. Personally, I like to fantasize about how I would act, get in some unusual world fantasy there, or the world of the distant past. And Ice Sky just give easily digestible food for thought and room for fantasy. The only serious problem associated with modern Ice Sky is the low average quality of the released titles of this genre. Well, the more interesting it is to find something more or less qualitative and interesting in this genre, so it's too early to abandon the search. I would like to dedicate this review to two seasons of Arafurita Shikujiu de Sekai Saikyu, in which, as the title suggests, the protagonist becomes the strongest craftsman in the world. Arafurita Shikujiu de Sekai Saikyu is an ice guy whose first season was released by Isred and White Fox Studios in the summer of 2019. It consists of 13 episodes. The second season was released by Studios Isred and Studio Mother in the winter of 2022 and consists of 12 episodes. The script, as can be easily guessed by the long title, is based on the sourcebook by Rai Shirakome, script, and Takayaki, character design. Among other things, a third season has been announced, but at the time of writing this review it has yet to air, and there are several special episodes and recaps. For those who don't know, Asred is a studio whose most famous work is the super-famous Mirai Nikki, they also produced the god-awful Big Order. What's interesting is that both seasons of Arafurita on the largest site my anime list, at the time of writing this review have mediocre ratings, but high popularity. Let's look into why this is happening. The events of Arafurita unfold in a fairy tale world, which is threatened by a great danger in the face of an army of demons, so the local magicians decide to call from a parallel world a squad of heroes to fight evil. It so happened that such an honor fell to a class of ordinary Japanese schoolchildren, who would have doubted it. Who got into the fairy tale world and acquired various abilities, someone became a paladin, someone a healer, someone a thief, someone a knight. The main character named Hajime Nagumo was not so lucky, he got the ability to transmute, change the properties of objects and transform them. The ability, at first glance, almost useless in battle. At first everything was going not so bad, the heroes were training, gaining levels, and even started to go to the nearest multi-level Great Orcus Labyrinth. But one day a team of schoolchildren on one of the deep levels came across an unexpectedly strong boss, and in the midst of the battle one of the classmates accidentally shot a spell at Hajime, as a result of which he flew into a deep abyss inhabited by terrible monsters. The heroes had to return to the base, and Hajime struggled to survive. He did not think of anything better than to eat the creatures of the labyrinth, thereby gaining their abilities. As he grows stronger and stronger, he decides to go not to the exit of the labyrinth, but to its bottom, where he meets the mysterious sealed girl you. I've mentioned many times in my reviews that the genre of Ice Sky, that is, anime about traveling to parallel worlds, will experience an unprecedented rise in the last five to seven years. Each season features several Ice Sky of varying quality and scope, many of which enjoy a certain popularity among fans. But why? Why has this particular genre experienced such a dramatic rise? In my opinion, two factors play a central role here. The first factor is the process of exploring a new world, which is often conducted in parallel by the character who finds himself in unfamiliar conditions and the viewer who will study this world through the eyes of the character. In my opinion, it is the exploration of the new world, its rules and laws, that is the most interesting part of Quality Ice Sky. But, unfortunately, in only a few Ice Sky the world actually turns out to be deep and elaborate, in general, worth exploring. The second factor is putting the characters in conditions that are unfamiliar to them and trying to understand how you would act in a similar situation. This factor is not unique to the Ice Sky genre, of course, but is most obvious in these. I generally like to fantasize and think about what I would do in the character's shoes, and Ice Sky give me a lot of room for fantasy. What would I do if I had invisibility? Or if I could teleport? What if I had magical powers? Would I start collecting a harem like most protagonists, or would I settle for a more rational choice? When considering the Arafurata universe, I'd call it predictable. I liked the first series, in which it seemed that most of the events would take place in multi-level dungeons, where the heroes would fight their way through hordes of tough creatures, becoming stronger and stronger. A tried and trusted formula that is unlikely to lose its relevance anytime soon. But the first arc ended quickly, the protagonists came to the surface, and it turned out that the place Hajime found himself in was the most ordinary fantasy world, with standard magic, knights, dragons, and demons. I won't say it's bad, but it's at least predictable and lazy. 
the rest of the mazes the characters get into turned out to be quite boring. In fact, I found only the devices and appliances that Hajime creates on the basis of knowledge from the past world interesting, as well as the way he uses them in battle. The parallel world itself turned out to be a bit poor in terms of interesting details. There are quite shambolic mages, knights, angels, and demons. If in the first season the interesting content is concentrated in the first part, then in the second season the most interesting events are concentrated in the second part. The second season as a whole turned out to be more interesting and darker, there is some drama, the intrigue about who the traitor is remains for a long time, and characters start to die, though not important, but still. In fact, I wish the writers had managed to pull this kind of atmosphere on the whole series, it would have suited it much better than the cheesy mix between inept drama and forced comedy that resulted. Remember, if all the comedy in the series boils down to various ladies from the harem competing for the protagonist's attention, and this is repeated from series to series, then you're doing something wrong. Scenes like this get tiresome very quickly. Overall, I enjoyed the first four episodes of the first season the most, and the last six episodes of the second season. I even managed to enjoy watching them. Thank you so much for watching, if you liked it put a like and subscribe to the channel.